The Dark Bible. Women's Inferior Status. The Biblical View of Women. The God of the Bible decrees that woman must submit to the dominance of man. The social and legal position of an Israelite wife was inferior to the position a wife occupied in the great countries round about. All the texts showed that Israelites wanted mainly sons to perpetuate the family line and fortune, and to preserve the ancestral inheritance. A husband could divorce his wife, women on the other hand could not ask for divorce, the wife called her husband Baal or master, she also called him a don or lord, she addressed him, in fact, as a slave addressed his master or subject, his king. The Decalogue includes a man's wife among his possessions, all her life she remains a minor. The wife does not inherit from her husband, nor daughters from their father, except when there is no male heir. A vow made by a girl or married woman needs to be valid, the consent of the father or husband, and if this consent is withheld, the vow is null and void. A man had a right to sell his daughter. Women were excluded from the succession. Burn the daughter. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profit of her father, she shall be burnt with fire. Leviticus 21 9. Comment. A priest's daughter, if found to have lost her virginity without marriage, can receive the death penalty, but in the form of incineration. How many fundamentalist priests who so easily condemn others would carry out the burning of their daughters, if they found them whoring? See also Genesis 38-24. Cut off her hand. When men strive together one with another, and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smitteth him, and putteth forth her hand, and attacketh him by the secrets, then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. Deuteronomy 25 colon 11 12. Comment. A wife would naturally wish to come to the aid of her husband in any way she could, if he desperately struggled with an opponent, but the Hebrew law specifically forbade a wife to help her husband in distress, if that support consisted of her grabbing the enemy's genitals in an effort to stifle his onslaught. The penalty? Amputation of the hand that fondled the genitals. Only in an overly obsessive male-dominated culture could men create such atrocious laws. As such, the penis ranks sacrosanct in the minds of men, as it still stands today. If a male lost his penis for any reason, he would lose the right to enter a congregation of God. See Deuteronomy 23.1. Female births get penalty. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation, for her infirmity shall she be unclean. Leviticus 12 2. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation, and she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. Leviticus 12 5. Comment. A woman who gives birth to a child must undergo a purification ritual, lest her uncleanness contaminate others. This not only entails her isolation, but also payments to priests for the ritual acts. Thus the male dominators had even made birth dirty. Notice here that, if a woman bears a female child, her isolation must last twice as long as that, if she gives birth to a male child. See also Psalms 51 colon 35. The Bible and the Church have been the greatest stumbling blocks in the way of woman's emancipation. Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Female Inferiority. But I would have you know, that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. I Corinthians 11 3. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. I Corinthians 11 colon 8 9. Comment. The Bible's decree of male supremacy has kept woman inferior to men for centuries. For the religious, it comes, as a sad fact that a human must have a penis to receive any respect or power within the church. All women should realize that such phrases in the Bible has justified for many Christian men, not only their supremacy but a reason to sexually abuse women. See also I Cor 14 colon 34 36, I Timothy 2 colon 8 15, I Peter 3 colon 1 7, Ephesians 5 colon 22 24, Colonel 3 colon 18 19. Jesus will kill children. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. 
and I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know, that I am he which seeketh the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Revelation 2 colon 22-23. Comment. If anyone thinks Jesus represents only a peaceful loving soul, then think again. For an act of adultery, Jesus would kill innocent children for the adultery of others, hardly fair justice, love, or the concern for human beings. Some apologists claim that children refers to the followers of a cult of Jezebel and not to children birthed from Jezebel. However, if this proved the case, the situation would appear even more horrific, for a cult of believers could number in the dozens, hundreds, thousands, or more. The deaths of these multitude of cult believers which would include children within its membership would only make the moralistic problem far more atrocious. It's interesting to speculate how it developed that in two of the most anti-feminist institutions, the church and the law court, the men are wearing the dresses. Flo Kennedy. Kill the witches. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Whoever leaf with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that secreteth unto any god, save to the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Exodus 22 colon 1820. Comment. These verses attest to the power of belief, as they led to the slaughter of thousands of defenseless people throughout Europe and the rest of the world. Understand that these verses not only authorize the executions but they explicitly command them. Verse 18 justified the burning of women in Europe judged as witches. In early America, the Salem witch trials resulted in the deaths of women and men. Verse 19 refers to bestiality, a sin considered worthy of death. Christians used verse 20 to justify religious wars, crusades and the slaughter of unbelievers throughout Europe. And the condemnation of heretics still goes on. Rape my daughter. Behold, here is my daughter a maiden, and his concubine, them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine, and brought her forth unto them, and they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Judges 19 colon 24 25. Comment. Judges 19 describe a father who offers his virgin daughter to a drunken mob. When the father says unto this man do not so vile a thing, he makes clear that sexual abuse should never befall a man, meaning him, yet a woman, even his own flesh and blood, or a concubine belonging to a perfect stranger, can receive punishment from men to do what they wish. This attitude against women still persists to this day and we have the Bible, in large part, to thank for this attitude against women. Verse 25 describes the hours-long gang rape of the poor concubine. The Bible gives not one hint of passion or concern for the raped girl. Considering that many people believe that every word in the Bible comes from God, it should not surprise anyone why people still use these verses to justify such atrocities. Silence the woman. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. I Timothy 2 colon 1114. Comment. Another case, where the Bible makes it quite clear that women live for man and must submit to them. Man enjoys the great advantage of having a God endorse the code he writes, and since man exercises a sovereign authority over women it is especially fortunate that this authority has been vested in him by the Supreme Being. For the Jews, Mohammedans and Christians among others, man is master by divine right, the fear of God will therefore repress any impulse towards revolt in the downtrodden female. Simone de Beauvoir, the second sex 1949. See also I-Core 11 colon 312, I-Core 14 colon 34 36, I-Peter 3 colon 17, Ephesians 5 colon 22 24, Colonel 3 colon 18 19.